Lord, for healing me of toothache that has lasted for five, since 2005. I've been having tooth problems, and last Sunday, precisely, um, the pain came, and it was very crucial. But I heard a testimony of a woman who, to the communion table, her daughter was healed of HIV. And Daddy thought out of the power of testimony the Sunday and on Wednesday. I kicked into it, and now the pain had gone. The swelling face too is lifted. Hallelujah. Now she's healed. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. My, my, test, my testimony of my coming year is my, my song is healing. I went to one, one crusade. So I went, my baby was not feeling fine, was feeling stomach pains. And that stomach pains always come in the night. So I went there. There's one of auntie. She's in the choir. So she called me. That if I has any problem, I should call her. I should flash her that she will call me back so that I would tell her. So I now flash her. She called me back. She now said I should come to her house. I went to her house. She prayed for my baby. She took my baby on her bed. She said as she's lying this baby on her bed that she doesn't use to sick. She does not have headache. So this baby is going to heal. And she healed my baby for me. She used anointing of oil to anoint my baby and be short picture and put in my baby's stomach. And now my baby is healed. I give the Lord thanks. Now the baby is healed in the name of Jesus. You shall be far from every form of sickness, you and your family members, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your name and straight to the point. Double portion. My names are Mr. And Mr. and Mrs. Michael. We come to glorify the name of the Lord for his goodness in our life. We got married three years ago, and uh, since then, the devil has been struck in. Each time my wife gets pregnant, it's miscarriage. Each time, miscarriage. So on the 26th of May last year, my wife now sent a text, uh, an email to the bishop. So the bishop now asked us to come to church that day. If we come to church, we we'll see somebody in his office. Thank God that there was, there was a service organized for as pregnant women, expected pregnant women. We went for the service. So mama declared that from that May 27 to February, people that have not conceived are going to give birth to their children February. And I key to that word. Already my wife was already three months pregnant. I said, okay, February with my, will be my own testimony. That is when I will come to thank God. My brothers and sisters, that, three, that pregnancy that my wife was with then, the, the bishop, when I met the bishop in the office, she anointed my wife and myself. That was all. And this is the result of the, this thing. Now you can see the evidence, the proof in his hands. God has given them a baby girl to the glory of his name in the name of Jesus. You are receiving your own already in the name of Jesus. Double portion. My name is John Akko. I'm privileged to serve in the ushering unit. I return to give glory to the God of this commission for breaking the yoke of unemployment in my life. I was stagnated in my career for about two and a half years, moving from one temporary job to the other. On the Friday of Shiloh, I lost my job. And they paid me off. I was very excited. I knew that God had a plan. So when I came to Shiloh that night, I heard the testimony of the brother who lost his own job, and I keyed into it. And the next day, I paid my Shiloh sacrifice, which was my payoff. And 10 days after, the US Embassy called me for an interview. After that interview, they called me for a second interview, and then I started waiting for the final letter. In between was the prayer and fasting, and I keyed into that fasting. By the fourth day, 
They called me for my appointment later. I am resuming tomorrow. I give God all the glory. Now he has his appointment later. You are receiving your own also in the name of Jesus. Double portion. My name is Rosalind Ame. I have a privilege to serve an ocean unit. I want to give glory to God for his divine arrangement for me this week. I've been believing God for a job since 2012, which is God did it this week. On Wednesday, I was lying down in the afternoon around three, after three. So I'm now, be, the word, there was this word that Papa Do said, that when we are looking for job, we should not realize that we should, be, we should continue looking for until we get it. That word now replied to my heart. I get up and now pick my CV. I took it to a particular place. So when I got there, I dropped my CV with the security. I left. A moment I left, not less than 10 minutes. They now called me that was it a lady that dropped the CV just now. I say yes. They said I should come back for my interview. So I went back there. My greatest surprise is that they said that uh, I have a sister. That my sister that I apply here, then call her. She said that she has got something doing and she did not. I, she, that is why they have to call me. And I was surprised. And I said, but I didn't have any grown-up sister that could apply for a job. Somebody shout hallelujah. God gave her the job miraculously in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Olubume Aria is my name, and I'm privileged to serve in Sanctuary Unit. I want to testify to the glory of God and to the shame of Satan for making me and my family to see the month of February. During the 21 days fasting program, I asked God to give me a miracle admission because I've been looking for the admission for the past years now. So I prayed about the admission issue seriously. To the glory of God, the last day of the fasting came. I got a call from Federal Police, Nasarawa, that the admission list is out. I checked for the names, and my name was among. So I'm here to return all the glory to God. Hallelujah. God gave her the admission. You know you are the next that will receive your own. Put your hands together for the Lord. And lift your hands and glorify his name for all of these testimonies. Father, we bless your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Education time. Every last Sunday of the month is a culture of the winners to appreciate God for who he has been to us, what he has done for us, how he has kept us, provided for us, sustained us, delivered us, redeemed us, supplied all our needs. Every time we look away from what God has done, we tempt God to look away for the next thing we require. For us to solicit God's attention for the next level and the next phase, we must acknowledge his visitation. This is the second month in the year of our double portion next levels. And I want to believe many of us seated here today have encountered God in strange dimensions. To pretend as if we have not seen the finger of God is to lose his hand. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 5 of Psalm 103, he said, Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You are looking great, looking gorgeous, looking young, looking radiant. Because God satisfied your mouth. Then it is our divine privilege this morning to join the host of evidences in this great assembly to acknowledge the good hand of God. You are going to package your thanksgiving seed that is separate from your regular church offering. You package your thanksgiving seed and get set to give God the best of your praise and the best of your appreciation. Anyone around you is not smiling and dancing and thanking God. Tell him, please change your seat because I want to shift my level. Anyone who does not look like he's thanking God this morning must not be allowed to sit near you. I'm sure somebody here wants to appreciate Jehovah. You want to thank him for all the best things he has done for you this year. 
Something has been added to you, if nothing, it kept you alive. It kept you moving on. It kept you hoping in him. It kept you trusting him. It needed to be appreciated. And as we rise up in appreciation and thanksgiving, every one of us that have listed our names for special thanksgiving will be asked to come forward, especially the 26 names that have been listed here for child dedication. You have priority to come to the forefront. Please, as you are bringing your child for dedication, please make sure you are in the forefront of the altar. Whichever angle you are, make sure you are in the front. Don't let anyone stand ahead of you. And so today we're going to rise up on our feet, everyone with our package offering. Wave our hands to the Lord in a moment before we enter the serious thanksgiving. And then every one of us who have written our names for any special thanksgiving, including children dedication, should begin to march forward to the altar. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him thanks. Speak a word of appreciation. Mention particular areas of your life God has been faithful to you. God has shown you his mercy, his kindness. God has intervened over your life. God has provided and supplied strange needs of your life. He has given you a testimony to share. He has singled you out for honor and for his divine privilege. Wave your hands in thanksgiving and appreciation and glorify Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Choir will lead us in a danceable song and we are going to rejoice in the Lord as these people come forward. Let's go. Oh, thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall we say? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
for dedication, make sure you are in the very front of the altar. Don't stand behind anyone. Lift up your two hands, people of God, and let us glorify the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We exalt you. Our heart is full of gratitude for all the good things and great things you have done. We appreciate you, Father. Thank you for the month of February. It has been beneficial in our life. It has been glorious in our existence. We glorify you. Thank you for the blessings material. Thank you for blessings spiritual. Thank you for interventions in all realms of our life. Take all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, with a heart of gratitude, we have come as a congregation to appreciate you. Thank you for every material blessing. Thank you for the lands. Thank you for the vehicles. Thank you for the promotions. Thank you for the added year to our lives. Thank you for the marriage thanksgivings. Thank you for the marriage anniversaries. Thank you for the birthdays that happened the month of February. We glorify your name. Thank you because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. Therefore, we know that which we are thanking you for today is eternally blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. For everyone thanking you for his or her birthday this month of February, thank you for bringing them into a new phase of their lives. For everyone thanking you for their marriage anniversary, thank you for opening to them a new phase of marital bliss. Lord, for every child brought to you for dedication this morning, we show our gratitude. You were with them, the women, for nine months of pregnancy. You saw them through the labor room. You brought them out, male and female, with their mother. And here they are standing before your altar, thanking you for that strange touch and visitation. Lord, we appreciate you. And as we present the children before you today, we ask that your hand will rest upon them. Your eyes will watch over them. Your power will protect and shield them. Among their equals, oh Lord, you will make them champions. By the anointing of your Holy Spirit coming upon them this morning, we ask that we single them out for safety. Single them out for honor. Single them out for sufficiency. Single them out for divine visitation. And as they grow older in age, they will mature in the knowledge and admonition of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the oil coming upon them today will be oil of exemption. Exemption from affliction. Exemption from sickness. Exemption from trouble. Exemption from untimely death. And as everybody who have come to thank you today get anointed, make it a fresh oil for a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for every one of us with our offering, our hand, thanking you today. We thank you for everything you have done great in our life. And as we move into the next month, make it a new phase and next levels. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Come and wave your offering in thanksgiving to Jesus. And thank him and thank him. Say, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. And as we get the children anointed and every one of us here, we will enter another level of dancing. Everybody in the congregation, shake your leg and move your body and let the Lord know you are appreciating. Let's praise the Lord. To you all be all the glory. To you, Jesus. To you, to you, to you, to you all. Oh, an adoration for it. Show 
Please, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is offering time. Please package your tithes, your offerings, kingdom investments, pledges and vows you are made to God openly or secretly. You told God, if you do this, I'm going to do that. And God has done his own side. It's time for you to honor him with such. As you do, label them appropriately. And have this scripture in mind. Psalm 20, 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from his sanctuary. And may the Lord strengthen you out of Zion. May the Lord remember all your offerings and accept your bond sacrifices. Please, you have packaged such offerings, ties, let's rise on our feet and honor the Lord, worship him, tell him how good he's been to you. Father, Lord, we thank you, we give you glory and praise. Thank you for another opportunity to honor you with our substance. Father, by this, remember our offerings. By this, open the windows of heaven for us. By this, rebuke the devourer for our sake. By this, pour upon us a blessing that our hearts will not be able to contain. By this, cause our desires to be granted. And Lord, send us help out of Zion this morning. Thank you, mighty God. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Please cast your offerings with joy, with love and faith in your heart as we welcome the choir to minister to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Enlargement is here this morning and he's moving us to our next levels in Jesus' name.
power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. Engaging the power of faith for the fulfillment of prophecy and our anchor scripture for the series of teaching is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. And Sarah also, and Sarah also, by herself, she received strength to conceive. Sarah herself received strength to conceive. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive. How? Because she judged God faithful who has spoken. In Genesis chapter 18, from verse 9 to 15, the Lord spoke to Sarah and to her husband Abraham that he was going to visit her. In verse 10 specifically, he said, at the set time, I will visit you at the set time. And you shall, he said, your wife will bring forth, you know, a child at the set time. And then in chapter 21, verse 1, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said and did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Once God speaks, he is committed to carrying out what he has said. Prophecies are ordained to be fulfilled. Prophecies are ordained to be fulfilled. God does not speak to us to make us feel good. He speaks to us to make his word good. God does not speak to us to make us feel good. He speaks to us to make his word good. God does not speak to us to make us feel good. He speaks to us to make his word good. And God visited Sarah as he has said. Genesis 21 verse 1, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. So everything God does is in accordance to what he has spoken. So if you can hear him speak, then you can at the same time get him to do it. If you can hear him speak, then you can at the same time get him to do it. For whatever he says he will do, he is committed to doing. Whatever God has said concerning you, he is committed to making it happen. And what has he said concerning you? He said, for you, you have double portion. Say with me, I have double portion. What has God said about you? And what more did he say? Next levels. That is what is going to happen to you in the name of Jesus. But I'd like you to note here, God's people, that prophecies come to us personally. Prophecies come to us personally. The prophecy for conception came to Abraham and Sarah personally. That's why the Bible says, uh, and through faith, Sarah herself, Sarah herself, Sarah herself, Sarah herself. When God speaks to us generally, you need to stand in the position to take it personally. When God speaks to us generally, you as a person will need to take a position to receive it personally. God cannot help you to receive it. Sarah herself. Sarah herself. Paul speaking to Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, he said, I give you charge, Timothy, according to the prophecy we has, which has gone ahead of you. To Timothy, to Timothy, to Timothy, to Timothy, according to the prophecy which has gone ahead on you, Timothy, that thou by, that thou by, by them mightest war a good warfare. You have to take a personal position. Why are prophecies not fulfilled in the lives of everybody? It is because even though God has spoken to everybody, God cannot make it happen for everybody. Everybody individually, individually must take their place to realize the prophecy. God speaks to us even though in the open, each person, must be prepared to take position. Therefore, it is your duty to accept responsibility. Say with me, I accept responsibility. <laughs> Say again, I accept responsibility. <laughs> the race of life is an individual commitment. 
That's why even in running, what the umpire do is to put everybody on the mark. They tell everyone on the line, you know, on the mark, get said, and then go. That means you are, your life is released to you to do what you please with it. We are saved as individuals. Nobody can get saved on your behalf. We run individually. Paul the Apostle speaking in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. He said, I therefore so run. I, Paul, run. I, run. Nobody can be saved on your behalf. Nobody can run for you. Nobody can win for you because nobody can fight for you. Nobody can believe for you. Nobody can receive for you. Nobody can hope for you. Nobody can anticipate for you. Nobody can expect for you. You must accept responsibility. Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 and 2, he said, Look unto your father Abraham and to your mother that bear thee. I called him alone. I called him alone. I called him alone. I called him alone. That's why when people are coming to share testimony on the altar, they share it alone. They share their testimonies alone because they fought alone and won alone. Shout hallelujah. Please don't let anybody deceive you if you have people who tell you we are praying for you. It's true they may be praying for you, but not with such intense as you do for yourself. Not with such intense as you do for yourself. People may support you, but the number one support of your life is yourself. The number one support of your life is yourself. Shout hallelujah. Say with me, I believe. Say again, I believe. That's why the scripture makes it very clear. It is to you according to your faith. Matthew 9, 29. It is to you according to your faith. It is to you according to your faith. May you accept responsibility to make things happen for you. Please hear this very well. I believe in prophetic help. I have received so much of the prophetic help. But no matter who the prophet is that is helping you, you still have to be on the line to run by yourself. You still have to be on the line to run by yourself. God's servant, Bishop Oedeko, has been such a tremendous blessing to me, but there is a limit to which it can go as far as the fulfillment of my destiny is required, I mean, is concerned. He can help to put me on the line, but he will not run for me. He can help to introduce me, but he will not speak for me. He can help to prophesy over my life, but I have to move towards the prophecy. You had some testimony again this morning. I prophesied over everybody here last Sunday by the help of God, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and somebody took off the prophecy and said, look, I'm looking for a job. I can't be sitting at home. I have to move out. She accepted responsibility, and under 10 minutes, they called her to come and take a job. Somebody else will sit down and say, oh, they have prophesied it. Whatever will be, will be. Amen. Whatever will be, will be. So failure will be around you. Because if you don't make a move, you cannot, you, cannot, you cannot make a wave. If you don't make a move, you cannot make a wave. The place of personal responsibility can never be over emphasized. I can pray for you to get who to marry, but you have to make a move to look for who to marry. I can't speak on your behalf. You have to go and speak to the person you want to marry. Please accept responsibility by faith. Sarah, herself. Sarah, herself. Sarah, herself. Have you not read from Hebrews chapter 11, from verses 33 to 34 and 5? The Bible says the women, they got back their dead children back to life. By faith. By faith. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> what then is faith? Faith is a spiritual trigger for the supernatural. Faith is a spiritual trigger for the supernatural. Faith is a spiritual trigger for the supernatural. In John chapter 6, verse 29, the disciples of Jesus came and met him and said, Master, 
what shall we do to do the works of the Lord? To do the works of the Lord. And Jesus said, to do the works of the Lord, you must believe. So faith is a worker. Faith is a worker. Faith makes things happen. Faith makes things to happen. Everywhere faith is, things must happen. Things are happening here because faith is at work here. Faith is not a dominant force. It's a dominant force. Faith is not static. Faith is dynamic. Everywhere faith appears, things must move forward. Faith makes things happen because faith is a worker. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. This signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. Signs shall be triggered by those who believe. And they went forth everywhere, verse 20. They went forth everywhere preaching. They went forth preaching everywhere. And God was confirming the word with signs of following. John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus says to his disciples, if you believe in me, the works I do, you shall do, and greater works you shall do. Greater works you shall do. If you believe in me, what I do, you shall do. You see, the point of difference between you and I is faith. What differentiates one believer from the other is faith. Faith. We are all the same before God, but faith can distinguish you from others. Faith can distinguish you other. Faith can make you an important, eminent person. Faith can turn you into a celebrity. Faith is what makes the difference. The Bible says there is no difference between Jews and Hebrew. For except for one thing, that is faith. Faith is the differential point between one believer or the other. We are all standing before God. We are all faith rated. He rates us according to our faith. God rates us according to our faith. He said, by faith, Rahab, the harlot, was not destroyed with them. She was not destroyed with them because she believed. She was marked out from destruction. Faith. By faith. You can come out of the class of poor people to become a prosperous person by faith. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. I must let you know, God's people, the principal factor for all the happenings in this ministry is faith. Faith at work. Faith at work. And for those of you who do quite some reading, if you have read about the moves of God, you discover that ministries that are faith-based are usually the most outstanding, the most impactful ministries. They don't die. Ministries based on faith don't die because faith keeps speaking even after the person who believes is gone. Faith is the trigger for the supernatural. Faith is not dominant. Faith is dominant. And dynamic in nature. Shout hallelujah. This week, that faith will work for you. Yeah. I said this week, that faith will work for you. Yeah. What is faith? Faith is committing God's integrity to perform. Faith is committing God's integrity to perform. Faith is committing God's integrity to perform. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things which are spoken to her from the Lord. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things which are spoken to her from the mouth of the Lord. So every time you believe, you are committing God to perform on your behalf. What are we saying? Faith commits God's action. Anywhere God finds someone believing, he has no choice but to walk. He has no choice but to walk. Anywhere God finds someone believing, 
he has no choice to walk. No matter how busy God is, the moment he finds somebody believing, he has no choice but to walk. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1, who had believed our report? The moment that person is found, then unto him shall the hand of the Lord be revealed. Faith commits God to work. Faith puts God on duty. God never says, I am busy to faith. He never will say, I am busy. Anywhere faith appears, God drops every other activity to attend to him. And we could, we could see that a lot in the scriptures. Jesus was preaching in a house, and then a man with palsy was dropped from a roof, and Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped for the, the man. Jesus stopped all the activity to act on the behalf of the man. And Jesus said, I have seen your faith. Something must happen to you. A woman with issue of blood was pressing through the crowd. Jesus apparently was preaching at that time. And as soon as the woman touched the hem of his garment, Jesus stopped the preaching and said, someone has touched me. What am I saying to you this morning? Everywhere God finds someone believing, he suspends other activity to attend to the person. Faith is number one thing that gets God's attention. No wonder the Bible says that let anyone that will come, come by faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means when faith is at work, God is pleased, God is impressed, God goes into action. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Faith commits God to action. It commits God to action. It commits God to action. When Jesus was in another meeting and Bartimaeus cried the cry of faith, the Bible tells us that Jesus stopped for him. Jesus always taught for faith to be at work. When Joshua said to the moon, to the star, to the sun, stop moving, God had no choice but to act because God is committed to faith. God is committed to faith. God is committed to faith. And this week, every activity will be suspended in your favor in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Did somebody hear me at all? I said this week, because the way I see you now, I can see you believing. I can see faith at work in you. Because of you, every activity will be suspended in your favor this week. When Ezekiah prayed by faith, the moon, the sun was turned backward. See, there is nothing God cannot do when faith is at work. The best of God is made manifest when the faith of man is at work. The best of God is put to work when the faith of man is put to work. The best of God is released when the faith of man is put to work. You don't know what God can do until you start believing. You don't know what God can do until you start believing. You don't know what God can do until you start believing. You don't know what God can do until you start believing. Blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which are told her from the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Say with me, I believe. Say it again, I believe. Do you know that by the end of July, church attendance in this place shall be doubled by faith? You don't know what God can do until you start believing. You don't know what God can do until you start believing. So start believing and God will start working. Shout hallelujah. I know without a doubt that this week will be your most outstanding week ever in the name of Jesus. There shall be enlargement for you in all fronts in the name of Jesus. Every request you have made in your prayer list today will receive super attendance, super attention of heaven in the name of Jesus. From today, your narrowness is terminated. It's important for you to be reminded that prayer always enhance the effect of faith. Prayer 
is expressed on the platform, or rather, faith is expressed on the platform of prayer. I'd like to repeat that again. Faith is usually expressed on the platform of prayer. What things soever ye desire, Mark eleven twenty three. 23, when ye pray, when ye pray. Prayer is platform created for faith to perform. What things soever you desire by faith, verse 24, when ye pray, when ye pray, believe. So on the platform of prayer, you believe. That's why your prayer today is on the platform. I mean, your prayer today is creating a platform for your faith to walk. Jesus speaking. He said, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. He said, number one, you need faith to make things work. But there is a level of work that may not take place without prayer. So prayer offers support to faith. Prayer offers support to faith. Prayer gives strength to faith to penetrate. That's why I said, ye beloved, build up yourself on your most holy faith. How? By praying in the Holy Ghost. By praying in the Holy Ghost. By praying in the Holy Ghost. Jesus speaking to Peter. He said, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. So when prayer is made, it enables faith to perform unfailingly. Luke 22, verse 32. I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Luke chapter 18 as well. Jesus speaking from verses 1 to 8. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. And when he was concluding in verse 8, he said, when the Son of Man come, will he still find this kind of faith at work? That is, will he find men still praying by faith? Will he still find men to pray by faith? I want to assure you, God's people today, that your prayer, which you have listed in your prayer card, is receiving heaven's attention right now. Before we close, it's important for you to note God's people that there are certain things that hinder prophecies from being fulfilled. Which is to say, on the other hand, there are things you must do to enhance speedy fulfillment of prophecies. And I'll quickly show you two of them right now. For prophecies to be fulfilled, you must develop the culture, the habit, of rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. Rejoicing in the Lord. Psalm 34 verse 7. Delight yourself in the Lord. And as you do so, he shall give to you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give to you the desires of your heart. That is, get excited about God, rejoice in the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 verse 4. The prophecies he has made concerning you is the desire of your heart. But you have to get excited in God. He said, although the fig tree does not blossom, neither there shall be no fruit in the vine, and the olive may, may fail. He said, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. He said, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. Now, you see, Many of us are disturbed by the happenings around us. You need to draw a line between things and God. True, you are looking for things, but you already have God. And God is the one that will give you the things. 
So what do you do? Get excited about God. You all know that even in the physical, there is a way you look before someone who wants to help you and move him to change his mind. Am I saying something? In the same way, you see, God wants to see your person before he will hear your petition. He wants to see your person before he will hear your petition. Many of us are in a hurry to tell God our petition. God wants to see you excited before you table before him your desires. That's why there was a woman who went to Jesus for her child to be healed. In Matthew chapter 15, you have the story there. She wanted her child to be healed and she kept crying and crying and Jesus did not answer her until she began to worship. And as she began to worship, Jesus said, now you are going to get my attention. We need to develop a culture of excitement before the law. Stop looking at the surrounding. Stop looking at the happenings. Stop focusing your eyes on things happening or things not happening. Get excited about God. Shout hallelujah. Let God know that whether he gives you things or he does not give to you things, he is still your God. I am satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied with him. My faith in him will never fail. I am satisfied with Jesus. He has promised he will never fail. I will hold on him. I will worship him. My God has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness, oh, he's forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore. Get excited about God. Hallelujah. Long ago, I believed in the message of prosperity. But there was a stage in my life I had just one pair of shoes. The shoe was tired. I couldn't retire it because there was no substitute. The shoe opened in front, and I mended it. When it refused to be mended, I vulcanized it. But that will not take my excitement away from me. It will not. I delight myself in the Lord. For faithfully see who has spoken, who will also do it. Never let the things around you dictate your disposition. Delight yourself in the Lord. Don't you see what happened to Abraham? When he believed, when he hoped, and he believed, and nothing seems to be happen, happening. The Bible says he became strong in the faith as he gave glory to God. Romans chapter 4 verse 20, he gave glory to God. And in the process, he became persuaded in verse 21. And concerning Sarah, by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. For she judged God faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lord. Faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lord. Faithful, 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 faithful is the Lord. Faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lord. I don't care whether what I am expecting has manifested or not. God is still God. God is still faithful. I rejoice in him. I celebrate him. I dance before him. Shout hallelujah. Never let anything tamper with your joy. Otherwise, many things will tamper with your harvest. Never let anything tamper with your joy. Otherwise, everything will tamper with your harvest. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. The harvest is destroyed because joy is withered away from the face of man. Never let anything tamper with your joy. Wake up every morning. Eat whatever you find. Wear whatever you find. Wear anything you find. Just don't, make sure nothing tampers with your joy. Eat anything you find. Wear anything you find. Ride any car you find in case you have any. And if you don't have any, ride on your leg as you go out. (laughs) 
When I was privileged to start pastoring, it was with four people, including myself. But you can't take my joy from me. You can't take my joy from me. When, I, when the church grew to 34, very powerful day. It was the first day my wife came to join me in service. I was so excited that I called the church members and we snapped a group photograph. They gave me a loving gift that day of food flask. Maybe they saw that I was not fat enough, so they felt I did man should be eaten. <laughs> Hallelujah. My joy never tampered with. Somebody was with us then who a few years after met with me when, by the grace of God, I was pastoring a church of 6,000 people. And he said to me, Bishop, you have not changed. I said, what do you mean? He said, the same way I knew you when you were pastoring us when we were 60 is the same way you are now. And I said to him, because I am not rejoicing because of the congregation. I am rejoicing because of God. I am rejoicing because of God. I'm celebrating God. I'm not celebrating congregation. I'm not celebrating size of church. I'm not celebrating a car. I'm not celebrating things. I'm celebrating God. Wave your hand and say to Jesus, I love you. If you want to see prophecy fulfilled, rejoice in the Lord. Number two, you want to see prophecy fulfilled, be at peace. Be at peace. Anxiety is a repeller to prophecy. Anxiety is a repeller to prophecy. Ah, when will God do it now? I think they said GCI is double portion. Look at February is almost gone now. When will this happen now? Eh? Am I going to wait like this forever? I'm tired of, I'm tired of waiting. And here you are, the blessing is just next to your door. Hear this. At the eve of your miracle, temptations get stronger. Have you not heard it been said? When the day is about to break, it gets darkest. It gets darkest. Anytime you are feeling Satan is pressing you, it's an indication that he got a signal that the miracle is about to land. The miracle... Abraham was tempted at the eve of his miracle. But he was strong in the faith, giving glory to God. He became persuaded. Be at rest. Be at rest. God is at work. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the heart. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know I am God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 32, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, there was a great attack by Shenakirib, a great king in the community, against Ezekiah and the children of Judah. And Ezekiah stood and spoke to the people. And in verse 8, in verse 8, the Bible says, and the people rested on the word of Ezekiah. They rested on the word of Ezekiah. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Ezekiah. So how do you obtain rest? How do you maintain calmness? Rest on the word. Rest. Don't keep your eyes away from what God has spoken. Anxiety will come when you look at circumstances. Rest will come when you look at the word of God. Rest. You know why I'm restful? Because God has spoken. Jesus and his disciples were going to the other side. And before they entered the boat, Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. And upon that word, Jesus rested. He slept. He rested. Meanwhile, his disciples were looking at the wave of the wind. And they saw what they were looking for. Until they went and woke up Christ. And Jesus said, peace be still. And the Bible tells us, immediately, immediately, they got to the other side. This week, you will get to the other side. You find that story in Mark chapter 4 from verses 36 to 40. In verse 38, he said, Jesus went and he slept. Verse 38, he slept and immediately they got to the other side. Immediately they got to... You see, when you are restful, God goes to work. God never goes to work until you go to sleep. Just like no surgeon goes into performing an operation until the patient is made to sleep. Have you ever seen where somebody has been operated with eyes open? You can see knife coming to your stomach and your eyes are open. You hold the doctor's hand. Doctor said, no, be patient. He said, no, I can't be patient. I can't let this cut, this cut last, cut my stomach. So what the doctor would do first is to give him anesthesia and then he will sleep. 
and the doctor asks, has he slept? They say, he has slept. Move his hand. They move his hand, his hand is down. Move his leg, they move his leg, the leg is down. So the doctor now goes into position and starts cutting him. That is the way God works. Until you go to sleep, God does not go to work. Until you take your rest, God cannot do the rest. So rest on the word. What has he said? He said double portion. When the surgeon is working on the patient, the patient does not have power to tell the doctor how long he should take. He doesn't have power to do it. So you are the patient, God is working on you. You don't have the power to tell him how long he should take. So stop being anxious. Take your rest in God. Be at peace. He said, hold your peace and God will fight for you. Exodus 14, 14. It's a new day for you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. The Lord shall fight for you. When? When you hold your peace. They are coming, they are coming, they are attacking me, they are coming. They said they would remove me from my job. Hold your peace. The one who put you there has not gone on break. The one who gave you the job will keep the job for you. Petitions are flying here and there. If the matter has reached the presidency that they will soon remove you. Hold your peace. He that is with you is more than they that be with them. After Ezekiah spoke, God sent an angel and he destroyed 185,000 people in the camp of Sennacherib. 185 people. I don't care how many people are fighting against you. As you hold your peace, God will fight for you. Well, before we close the service this morning quickly, we want to give a chance to those who are yet to be born again. You know you are in church this morning. Either somebody invited you or God himself brought you. You know you are not born again. You have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Please don't be a pretender. Don't be an hypocrite before God because he knows everything about you. Why must you keep hiding and hiding and hiding when you know you need to make things right? Wherever you are this morning, God is talking to you to surrender your life to Jesus. I'd like to pray for you. Will you stand to your feet? Everyone who wants to give his or her life to Jesus, stand to your feet right now. Whether you are coming for the first time or you have been coming before now, stand to your feet. Now, hear this. Last Sunday, somebody said, I've been attending this church for the past 10 years, but there is nothing they tell us to do that I do. And until I did it last December, things did not open for me. You can be a member of the church and not be a member of the body of Christ. You know you have been attending this church, but your life has not changed. You are still drinking, you are still smoking, you are still living in your old sinful way. Don't make a mistake that you attend this church is not a ticket for going to heaven. If Jesus comes now, will you go to heaven with him? If you are not sure, stand to your feet. If you are not sure you are born again, stand to your feet. Maybe you have been saved, but you still put one leg outside and one leg inside. You are backsliding. You know that you are not fully for Christ. You are not fully for Christ yet. And this morning, you want to make up your mind, I have decided to follow Jesus, the world behind me, Jesus before me. You want to check your faith right now and be sure that you have not already backsliding. Stand to your feet. I'd like to pray for you as well. You want to be restored back to the faith. God bless you. God bless you. Now, all of you who are standing up, I'd like you to take a step and come to the altar here right now. Come to the altar here right now. All of you who are giving your life to Jesus, take a step quickly. Step out here. Step out here. Step out here. Come. Everything you came to church with, you bring it along with you, including your bag, your Bible, your prayer card that you brought this morning. Give Jesus a big hand as they come, everybody. God bless you. God bless you, and God bless you. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' wonderful name. Please be reminded, we have powerful books for the month. Books on faith, written by God's servant, uh, Bishop David Oedepo, and other authors that will be a blessing to you. Please make sure you pick the books and be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. The Miracles Are Real for the Week is also out, and it is blessed. Engage the power of faith, engage the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy. Please pick your copy and be blessed 
in the name of Jesus. Church, aren't you excited to see these souls getting saved this morning? Please make sure you always have your announcement sheet with you so that you can be reminded of the various activities for the week. It will be a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Don't, wherever you are seated, stand to your feet and come quickly to the altar here as we pray right now. Now, all of you in front here, all of you in front here, please suspend feeling of, of your form. Bow your heads in prayer. Lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. Bow your heads in prayer. And say this prayer with me. Say with me.